Hello, friends. You're listening to episode 65 of On Purpose with Alex Beaton. That's right. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the launch lessons from my $58,000 launch, but actually, it was way more than that because we got 175 grand coming in over the next year if we have a 10% churn rate, but I'm going to get into all the nitty gritty details with you, what worked, what didn't work, what my lessons and observations were. And yeah, that's all coming up in this episode. So I hope you enjoy. Do you ever feel like you're trying to balance it all? Nourishing your health while growing your business and living a life well lived? And no matter how hard you try, sometimes you slip from purpose driven into autopilot. Take a deep breath relax and let's get you back to where you belong on purpose hello friends oh my goodness i feel like it's been so long since we last had a chat it was i remember when it was it was episode number 63 i was in the airport on my way to necker island to hang out with my mastermind buddies and of course the one and only richard branson cannot believe that I got to actually spend time with him again, which is so awesome. But today I'm going to be sharing with you the launch lessons from a $58,000 US launch. And so in this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about all of the things that I think we did right as a team, all of the things that I think we could improve on next time. And I'm going to be summarizing this all up with some observations. So let's dive in. So for those of you who don't know, last month I launched a brand new offering called Project Storyline. And that brings me to something particularly special, I think, which is that You know, people always say to focus on what's already working, focus on what's already working, focus on what's already working. Don't bring too many new things in. And I think that that is true to an extent. Like I think once you have found something that really works, yes, stick with it. But for me, I was really kind of struggling to find something that worked. Like I explained to you guys, I believe if you listen to episode 61, I spoke to you about where the idea for Project Storyline came from. And really, it came from solving a problem that we were having in that the business, because we have a launch model, it was like the business would make a lot of money and then we'd have a few months where we'd make nothing and then the business would make a lot of money because we'd launch again and then a few months of nothing. And I really wanted something that was just going to even out the profitability of the business on a monthly basis, to be quite honest. So having said that, Project Storyline was born. Project Storyline, for those of you who don't know, is a monthly subscription service for people who really have no clue what to post to their stories and also for people who are looking to get clarity on their business. This is perfect for the new business owner who is just starting to put themselves out there, perfect for someone who wants to build an online brand and isn't sure what the best way of doing that is. And perfect to just get the gears rolling and in motion for anyone who's too busy. Like your business already takes up so much of your time having to stop and think, oh, what should I post to my stories today? It is only making your life that much more stressful. So that's what Project Storyline was created as a solution for. And it was created... You know, it's a $30 a month subscription. We also offered a yearly subscription, which was $240 US dollars a year. And that is what Project Storyline is. For anyone who didn't know, that was the new offering that we created in the business. And it works very well with what we already had that was working very well, which is called Gram Slam. That's my online course, right? And so the way that I've built my business right now, what we're really focusing on is allowing me to lead my brand with Instagram stories. I'm really claiming the title of Instagram stories queen. And because let's face it, like I freaking love stories. I've been making stories ever since Snapchat first invented them. It's been years. I was doing stories before they were cool, before they were even on Instagram. And so I say that, yes, I I own that title, but I also really love owning that title. And a quick reflection for you is that I've realized that by owning that title, I've had so many more opportunities come my way and I've been introduced to so many more people solely because 
I'm the Instagram stories expert. I'm the Instagram stories queen. Is that the only thing that I do? No, I'm also really good at launching. I'm also really good at online business, helping you figure out how to take your passion and and be profitable with it online. But my hook, the thing that really gets people from from the get-go has become Instagram stories. Cool. So I've kind of given you, for anyone who's new, because I know a lot of people will just be finding this podcast and find this episode and be like, oh my gosh, yes, I want to listen to this. (laughs) So that's really how I've built the business. And Right now, the two main things that we're focusing on are Gram Slam, which is my online course, and Project Storyline. I just launched Project Storyline for the very first time, and we had an exceptional launch. We blew our goals out of the water, which was incredible to experience. And there are so many interesting things about this launch. And so in this episode, like I said, I want to share what we did right, what we did wrong, and what some observations are on my end And hopefully you can listen to this, especially if you are someone who is in the online space and if you are someone who launches digital products online, even better. If you're not someone who's in the online space, there's still so much to learn from just hearing about other people's launch experiences. So I hope that you get whatever it is that you need out of this episode. So let's get started. One of the things that I think I did right from the get-go is I was always very clear on what my goal was. And we changed the goal from from time to time. Like I think my my initial goal was we wanted 700 members. Then when we actually launched, I was like, no, let's push it. Let's go to 800 members. We actually ended up with more than 1,000 members. But what's important is that I had Post-it notes hanging right in front of my desk. So whenever I sat down to work, it was a constant reminder of what it was that I was working towards and what it was that I was trying to create I never forgot. There was never like, hmm, how many of these are we trying to sell? Or how many people am I trying to get to opt in? It was always crystal clear. And so I just want to like start off with that. If you're launching, being clear on your numbers from the get-go is one of the most valuable things that you can do. The second thing that we did ahead of time that I think was super valuable is we did market research. I sent out a survey to my entire email list and I was just like, hey guys, I'm creating something new behind the scenes, and I would love to know your thoughts and opinions. And I sent them, I think it was like a four-page survey. And each time you press next to the next page, it saves the answer so far. So not everyone filled out all four pages, but I put the most important questions on that first page so that we could try and get the most important answers. And that was super, super, super beneficial, right? So we had hundreds of people take this survey. I was able to get really clear on what the pain point of my ideal client was, what they were struggling with the most when it came to creating content for their Instagram stories. And I got very clear on what they wanted their Instagram stories presence to be like. And I was able to use all of that information to put together a sales page. (laughs) That just reminds me of something that we could have done better next time. I'm going to write that down in my notes. But yeah, that was very helpful, very beneficial. I absolutely recommend it. If you are someone who doesn't have an audience yet and you're like, Alex, I don't have anyone to ask these questions, it is up to you to find your ideal clients and ask them these questions. You'd be surprised how many people would be more than willing to help you if you simply approach them and you were like, hey, I think you're my ideal client because of X, Y, Z. If you feel like you fit this description... I'm really trying to do some market research and I'm struggling to find anyone who's really going to participate. And if I could just have five minutes of your time, that would mean the world to me. For me, when it's a high ticket item, I like to get people on the phone. I like to have a 15 to 20 minute conversation with them and really pick their brain. For a low ticket item, for example, this, where it's only $30 a month, a survey was more than fine and it worked out. It was good. We did the market research and that was awesome. Another thing I did that was super beneficial is right before the launch, right before we were about to go live, I had a conversation with two of my biz besties. We've got Amanda Bond and we've got Adrian Dorison. And the three of us had a conversation and we were just really preparing for our mastermind. This was not planned on my behalf. And this is something that I will do in future because it was really beneficial. So just get on the phone with them and be like, hey, this is my new offering. I'm about to launch it. What do you guys think? And to be able to pick their brain and to have them be like, do this, don't do that, try this, da da da. And just to hear, like, you don't have to take someone's advice or information or whatever, but just getting a third party perspective from someone who's 
more intelligent than you in other areas, it just helps, right? So if you can get on the phone with someone who's done something similar before, if you have any business friends, and this is the thing, it's really important to talk to people who understand what you're doing. I'm not talking about going to your best friend who has no clue about business or who's never sold anything in their life. I'm talking about people who have done it before, right? Or people who have worked with people who have done it before, people who have a level of experience that they can extract from. And so that was really beneficial speaking to them. They they highlighted some red flags that I hadn't considered before. And I actually made a very important decision with them that I'm so happy that I made, which was initially we were going to have a Facebook group for Project Storyline. And after speaking to them, I realized that the price point was too low for me to create a sacred container of a Facebook group to the level of what I would like to create. So instead, I decided to really put the focus of the community on Instagram and to keep everything on Instagram. That's not something I've seen done before. And it's something, like I said, I'm the Instagram story queen. I have a lot of great ideas about how to use a private Instagram account to foster that level of community between our project storyliners. And so they were really the people who highlighted that for me. And they were like, yo, like do it. Like don't create this Facebook group experience because it's just going to, it's going to be a a suck on your resources. It's going to be distracting for your people. It's not going to give them the end result that they're looking for, but keeping the community on Instagram allows everyone to connect while not becoming too big of a distraction. So Speak to your friends. And if you don't have business friends and you're like, oh, I don't know who to talk to, question that. How can you meet people who can become your business besties, who can become the people that you turn to and ask for help, who become the people that you admire and respect and look up to and have the experience to draw on that can help you in making better business decisions? We are not in this alone. A lot of times in businesses, when we have our own business, we feel alone. I've spoken about that before. I spoke about that in my last episode. We are not alone. It's our own decision to be alone. In my first few years of business, I didn't network at all. I I did very minimal networking. (laughs) And now I realize how important it is to have those in-person, real-life relationships. So I highly encourage it. You know, Foster those relationships with those people and use them before you launch something new or if you're struggling with anything in your business, you know, being able to, to rely on people and call on people for help and being able to be a resource for those people at the same time, super beneficial. Another thing that we did that was very spot on is that we used my free five-day challenge called Double Down on Your DMs. It's a free five-day Instagram story engagement challenge. Number one, we used it before as the pre-launch content for Gram Slam, which is my online course, right? And it worked quite well, but it didn't work as well as I would have liked it to. And upon reflection, when I looked at why that didn't work as well as I would have liked it to, I think it's because Double Down in Your DMs is a five-day challenge where they get a prompt every single day of what to post to their stories, right? Now, in regards to that, it's just not the perfect fit for Gram Slam because Gram Slam is not a daily prompt delivery service, but Project Storyline is. So every day with Project Storyline, they are getting delivered a fresh new Instagram story prompt, right? And the concept is that they will do double down in your DMs, which is the five days of prompts, and then they'll want more, which is the perfect precursor to Project Storyline. So double down on your DMs, that five-day Instagram story engagement challenge, which was a much better fit for Project Storyline than it was for Gram Slam. They're much better aligned for each other. So to translate that into your business, make sure that your pre-launch content is a perfect fit for whatever it is that you're selling and offering afterwards. Another thing that we did for Double Down on Your DMs is we changed pretty much, we kept the prompts the same, but we changed the strategy. So the first time that I ran Double Down on Your DMs, I believe was in October 2018, I wanted to experiment with keeping it super short, super straight and to the point, straightforward and to the point. This time I decided to make it a little bit longer and include more strategic conversation. So if you listen to the new double down on your DMs, you'll notice that each and every single day, I'm preparing my listener for what is to come. 
I'm dropping hints about project storyline. I'm talking about the importance of the strategy of your story. I'm talking about the importance of showing up on a consistent basis. I'm preparing them to know everything they need to know in order to make the correct decision for them as to whether project storyline is a good fit for them or not. This round of double down on your DMs was much more strategic and it worked. It it was much more effective. So results wise, we got 8,200 signups for double down on your DMs. 5,400 of those signups were new to our list. So 66% of the people who signed up were new to our list. About 10% of people who opted in to double down on your DMs unsubscribed by the end. Guys, this is totally normal. 10% actually feels a little bit high. Like I'd obviously like to see that number go down. But I'm not stressing myself over the fact that one in every 10 people unsubscribed because really I'm there to deliver my free content, deliver the message of Project Storyline. And if someone unsubscribes, cool, like they're gone, that's fine. They can decide to join later on. If it's not a good fit for them now, that's totally fine. I'm just highlighting that to just let you guys know, like don't kick yourself about your unsubscribes. Like I don't even really look at my unsubscribes. Okay, so 8,200 people signed up to our list and 1,035 people, I believe it was like 1,030 people joined Project Storyline. So we're looking at about a 12.5% conversion rate, which sounds like a lot because it is. That means for every 100 people who signed up for Double Down on your DMs, 12 bought, right? But there's a few things that we're not considering here. One thing that we did differently this time is normally when I launch, when I'm launching a product, I will only send launch emails to the people. I will only sell sales emails to the people who opted in for my pre-launch content. In this case, double down on your DMs. This time, and I did this because someone had told me in passing that sometimes they just want to buy. They don't want to go through the whole pre-launch content. They already know, like, and trust me, they just want to buy. And so this time I sent the pre-launch content only to the people who signed up for the pre-launch content, double down on your DMs, but I sent the sales emails to everyone on our list who's been active over the past 180 days. So I believe that was about 35,000 people. So we can't really look at that 12.5% conversion rate because it's not only out of the 8,200 people who signed up, it's of my entire email list, right? So that's something to keep in mind. 52% of Project Storyline members were already members of our VIP list. 40% of Project Storyliners did not sign up for Double Down on your DMs. I thought that was so interesting. That's pretty crazy that 40% of people did not go through our pre-launch content. They only got sent sales emails and they still signed up because they were already warm. They were already on my email list. So that was such a good lesson for me. Like, can you imagine if I didn't send out those emails to everyone, we would have missed out on 40% of sales. Another thing that we did that worked really well, we offered a yearly subscription. We had 13% of people opt in for that. So the yearly subscription offer was $240 as opposed to $30 a month, which is like a 30% saving. So it was a pretty big saving. We spent $9,000 in Facebook ads. At the end of the day, once everything was said and done, the total cash in hand after the launch was about $58,000. So it was like $58,560 US dollars. And the profit off of that was $45,200 US dollars. Things that we spent money on were Facebook ads, obviously a good $9,000 there. We spent money on graphic design. I think that's about it. Maybe a little bit of copywriting here and there. So that's $45,000 about in profits. And then over the next year, we're looking at $175,000 coming into the business if we have a 10% churn rate. And that's if everyone follows through with their subscriptions, because sometimes someone might not pay or we'd have to chase people down or whatever. So if everyone pays, that's how much we're looking forward to over the next year. And that's just in recurring income of, you know, these monthly and yearly subscriptions, which is awesome. So that's relying on a 10% churn rate. Right now, we are nearing the end of the month and we're already at 9%. It's looking like we might go over that 10% churn rate though. So that $175,000, 
that might actually be overestimating it because obviously we just guessed that we'd have a 10% churn rate. For those of you who don't know, churn rate basically just means like how many people are unsubscribing because this is a service in which you can unsubscribe at any time. So right now we're looking at a 9% churn rate, but we don't know what that will be by the end of the month. It's too early to tell. I think there's still a few days left, so we will have to wait and see. Just a quick break in the show to let you guys know that if you're enjoying this episode, which you must be because you still listen in, my friend, then I'd really appreciate it if you took two minutes of your time to leave us a review. What I want you to do is go to the Apple Podcast app. It's like a little purple icon. I want you to find On Purpose with Alex Beaton. I want you to subscribe because, yo, subscribing, super important. It's a great way to support the show. And then I want you to leave a review. And just to inspire you, I'm going to read one that someone left recently. She said, well, this is from Princess Natkins on Apple Podcast in the USA. She said, I found Alex on Instagram a while ago and have been listening to every podcast. On Purpose with Alex Beaton is so inspiring and informative. I really appreciate how Alex continues to inspire and support others to be successful in their businesses. We need more people like Alex as leaders and sharing their wisdom. If you've not listened to Alex's podcast yet, I highly recommend it. You will feel inspired to take your business to the next level with her positive and inspiring words. Thank you so much, Princess Natkins. I deeply appreciate it. And like I said, guys, it takes two minutes. You know, I don't ask for a lot from you on this show. We are currently 100% ad free. And if we want to keep it that way, then your support really means everything. So go to the Apple Podcast app, subscribe, scroll down all the way down. There's going to be like a little leave a review icon. Click on it and leave me a review. It would mean the world to me. And maybe you never know, you might even get featured here on the show. Okay, back to the episode. Okay. So that's everything we did right. Other things we did right, I think as a team, we had very high levels of communication. Laura and I, we might not always see eye to eye and we might have slight disagreements on things, but we are excellent at communicating with each other. And I think being understanding of each other and being there for each other, I think as well from a perspective of what we did right we did the best that we could. Like there was a lot of things. If you listen, if you've been listening to the podcast, you'll know that a lot of things were happening in, the, in that lead up to the launch. My sister visited. There was carnival. There's just like always something happening, and so the launch actually felt very disturbed right up until the launch. And when I say disturbed, I mean that it was hard to stay on task. It was hard to like get everything done because I felt like so much was happening in my personal life. <laughs> But I think we did the best that we could. And and from that perspective, I think that was a very good thing. I think as well, I remained very calm. Like I, I remember in that launch week, I would say I didn't start feeling anxiety until the cart opened, which is like unheard of for me. Normally I'm feeling anxiety all throughout the open or all throughout the launch period. But the pre-launch period, the opt-in period, the double down on your DMs period, I was going with the flow. I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, like I have finally gotten the hang of launching. I could do this a million times. I know exactly what I'm doing. I feel fully confident. I felt good. I felt like I was just surfing through the, the ocean waves of this launch like a pro. And that doesn't mean that everything was easy, FYI. As I'm about to share with you, there were a lot of things that could have been improved on. <laughs> but it just means that like I was, I felt like I was handling everything with ease, which I think was the best way to handle things. Okay, so now things that we could improve on next time. The sales page. Guys, it took me weeks to work on the sales page. I remember, I think I had it in my asana to finish the sales page like two or three weeks before the open cart. And it was just something that took me forever. Like we did not finish the sales page until the day before or even the morning of. That sales page, although clearly it did its job, for me, I look at it and I'm like, it could have been so much more concise. We could have done such a better job. And here's the thing, guys. Every time you launch something for the first time, it's not going to be perfect the first time around. So although I can say, yes, there's room for improvement there, it's also the first generation of the sales page. It did really well. So I can't kick myself too hard about it. And you know, next time it will be even better. But that is definitely something that I I wish I had done differently. I think when I start to realize that it's something is taking me weeks to finish, it just needs to be like, I wish that I had just moved on to the next task and come back to the sales page later on. 
The next thing, filming of three of the five challenge videos were done the night before, which means that during the double down on your DMs challenge, I couldn't be as present with people as I would have liked to have been because I was so busy creating these videos because I have to do my hair, do my makeup, film them, edit them, da 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 da. Now, of course, you know, this is not something that is ideal. I want to have these videos done in advance, but because the sales page had t- taken so long and that was the task before the, the videos, the videos just ended up happening at the very last minute. Again, not perfect, not ideal, but clearly they did their job and such is life. <laughs> Moral of the story, like I think I did a really good job of not beating myself up. And I think that's not everyone's cup of tea. I think a lot of people would be like, that's shameful. Or, you know, what kind of business owner are you if you leave all these things to the last minute? And it's like, dude, I'm doing the best I can. I'm learning every single time. I can see myself improving every single time. So I just don't believe in being that hard on myself. The next thing that I think we could improve on is I think we left money on the table because we didn't have an upsell option. And because so many things had been left to the last minute, we didn't even have time to think about the upsell option. But that would have been an easy maybe one hour task of just like figuring out the back end of adding the upsell. We have an upsell ready for people. Gram slam, $200. We could have converted if even 3% converted, that would have been a nice extra sum of like just to do the math, 3% of 1,000 is... 30 times 200, you're looking at an extra $6,000, right? And an extra $6,000 would have been $6,000 divided by 58,000. You're looking at an extra 10% of of income. That that would have been nice. (laughs) So we left money on the table, but it's all good. What happened, happened. The next thing that I think we can improve on next time is we needed a community manager. I don't know how we didn't think, because we had a community manager the last time we launched for the School of Killer Impressions with Make Money Being You. This time, we didn't have a community manager, and I will tell you, it got so hard by the end of it. Like, there were just so many things. That Facebook group was just going insane. We also weren't as strict with things as we should have been, so there was a lot of people just being like, follow me on Instagram, this is my link, and here, and I know everyone's like trying to build community and, and connect with each other, and I think that's positive, but there was no organization in the group, and it was driving me crazy, but at the same time, there was so much going on behind the scenes that we didn't really have the resources to deal with it, so next time, community manager, 100% necessary. Also, like, bear in mind, guys, you know, thousands of people were in that group. We had like four or 5,000 people in that group. So it's not just like a small community of a couple hundred people. It's thousands of people. Next thing that I noticed is that a lot of people were, when they signed up for Project Storyline, they were posting about it to their Instagram stories. And I just never realized what an opportunity this is to delight our customers and also what a fantastic marketing tool it is. So this time we just had like a very simple page that said like, congrats for signing up for Project Storyline. But when people shared it to their stories, it wasn't even very clear what they had signed up for. We could have made that page so much more Instagram story friendly. It could have been, the text could have been bigger so that people who didn't know what they had signed up for would have more clearly been able to see what they had signed up for. We could have done some kind of fun video. So that was an opportunity for creativity that I hadn't really thought of before that next time we'll definitely be thinking of. Also, another thing that we didn't do this time, last time we ran Facebook ads, getting people to opt in for the free challenge right up until the cart opened. So even when the challenge was happening, we still had people signing up. And what we noticed was that a huge percentage of people who signed up for the School of Killer Impressions had signed up for the free challenge, which at that point was Make Money Being You. So that's the equivalent of Double Down on Your DMs is Make Money Being You. They had signed up for Make Money Being You while Make Money Being You was running, right? So I don't think Having the ads open during the challenge is not a bad idea because it converted so well for us last time. I think this time, like I said, we were just, there was so much going on behind the scenes. We knew about the statistic and for some reason we still closed down the ads, such as life. Uh, Something else to bear in mind is that we have been working with a Facebook ads managing team. So we're not really doing the Facebook ads. So that would have been something easy to just be like, yo, keep the ads running until the cart opens. So that's one thing. And then the last thing that I think we can improve on next time is opening the Facebook group from earlier because what we did is 
and this is what we always do, we don't open the Facebook group until the challenge starts. Reason being that we want everyone to join at the same time and we want there to be to feel the sense of momentum, etc. However, one of the biggest customer service complaints that we got in the lead up to the launch was, I haven't been added to the Facebook group. I haven't been added to the Facebook group. And people are getting pissed off that they were not being added to the Facebook group. So I'd like to experiment with opening the Facebook group before the challenge and showing up in there regularly and building excitement and anticipation for the challenge because we might find that challenge participation goes up. So that's something I would like. I don't think we did that wrong this time. I think we just need to experiment with it. Also, something to bear in mind is that we very clearly communicated that people would not be added into the Facebook group until the challenge started. And we still got so many emails from people being like, why haven't you added me to the group? So it's it's definitely not something that we could have communicated more clearly because at every touch point, we communicated it again and again and again. So I think next time, just experimenting with opening it up from the, from the get-go would be great. And, you know, maybe giving people accountability partners and pairing people up to be like, yo, like you two are together, you two are together, or maybe doing like groups of accountability or something like that. It's so much easier to be accountable to something if you have someone who's checking in on you and checking up on you. When it's just you, eh, you're kind of like, should I bother? I don't really know. Like, I don't know what this is all about, whatever. What was super interesting is I have this girl in my life. She's a business owner and she signed up for Double Down on Your DMs and she was constantly like texting me being like, you know, is this a good thing to post? Is that a good thing to post? And I realized there's so much self-doubt when you're not used to posting Instagram stories and having an accountability partner could really help people like stay committed. So that was one thing. And then lastly, I just want to share some observations that I thought were particularly interesting. So we noticed that when we had ads running to get people to opt in and sign up for Double Down on Your DMs, which is the free challenge, Instagram story ads outperformed Facebook ads by far. Like we turned off Facebook ads for the opt-ins because the Instagram story ads were just way overperforming. But when it came to the end of cart ads which basically are like, hey, the cart is open, the cart's about to close, come and sign up, da 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 We like talk about the, the objections and what they're going to gain and the transformation, etc. Our end of cart ads performed way better as Facebook ads than they did as Instagram story ads. So next time, I'd really like to, to experiment with our Instagram story ads. You know, I have so many ideas of what those ads could potentially look like and how our communication could be even stronger. And I think next time, that's something I'd like to to experiment with. And then interestingly, this was the launch that I did the least amount of visualization for. It was also the launch in which I stayed the most calm and the least judgmental about my lack of visualization. So if y'all have been following me for any length of time, you will know that I'm big into visualization. You've got to check out, I think it's episode 44, where I talk about how I manifested $100,000 over like, I think it was three or four months. That's an epic episode. And I share my visualization techniques with you in that episode. You'll know if you've been listening, I'm big into visualization. And for this launch, I really didn't do very much, if at all. And I remember throughout the launch thinking, wow, like I really haven't been doing what I normally do. I wonder how that's going to affect the launch. And I could feel myself starting to like guilt trip myself into like, you haven't been doing your visualizations and the energy that you show up with is the energy that you attract. And if you're not doing your visualizations and really activating that energy, what's going to end up happening? And then I realized that like, regardless of the tool that you use, like visualization is a tool, but if I can stay in a state of abundance and in a state of receiving and in a state of ease throughout the launch, regardless of whether I'm visualizing or not, that was all that mattered. And so I really stayed in a state of non-judgment about myself throughout the launch, about the fact that I hadn't done that much visualization. And also about the fact that like a lot of it was done at the last minute. And also about the fact that this was a brand new product. And also about the fact that I had no idea what was about to happen. Considering that there were so many open-ended questions and like there was so much unknown going on. And like, I didn't know if this launch was going to be a success or not. And then the fact that it was a success And the fact that I kind of just like, I just did it. I just showed up and I kept my vibe high and I didn't do a lot of visualization or I didn't use a lot of the tools that I normally use, but I did not guilt trip myself about it. Whereas the old version of myself would have really guilted myself about it. And I think that's super important to highlight as well. You don't have to be a perfect human. 
but you're responsible for your energetic hygiene. And if you are guilting yourself, making yourself feel bad about not doing things perfectly, about not doing things 10 weeks in advance, and about not visualizing, and if you're making yourself feel crappy about it, well, guess what? You're not creating an environment in which it is going to be easy for you to create a successful launch. Your number one priority when you're launching, at least for me, is my state of well-being. Because when you launch, it's a huge tax on your nervous system. Like it is so stressful. I've launched so many times. I'm like now really getting used to it. I now feel like a pro. But it's taken me a long time to get here. And I guess what I'm trying to communicate to you here is the importance of understanding that you need to to measure your success based on how you handle the stress of it all and how you handle the nervousness and the uncertainty of it all. Because you're going to be uncertain and you're going to leave things to the last minute sometimes and things aren't going to go perfectly. Sometimes you're going to have launches that don't do as well as you want them to. Sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. Sometimes you're like, there's so many things that are going to happen, but you really need to make sure that you're creating like a safe space internally where you're not being judgmental toward yourself and where you're not judging yourself and where you're really treating yourself with love. Something that I did this time, which I've, I think this is the second or third time I've done this. I gave myself weekly massages every single week of the launch. And it was crazy how every time I would lay down on that massage table, I could just feel my body like immediately relax and just giving myself permission to relax and like carving out that time to give myself a little bit of self-care and a little bit of love super, super, super important. So yeah, those are my launch lessons from my $58,000 launch. And that's $58,000 in hand launch. It's actually a launch that's worth far more than that because you're looking at the $58,000 in in hand and then you're looking at the $175,000 over the next year if we have a 10% churn rate. So this has definitely been a game changer for the business. When I went to Necker Island to meet with my mastermind group, I spoke to them so much about, you know, what this means for my business and what the next steps are. And I think that's probably going to be the next episode of, or the next solo episode of On Purpose with Alex Beeden. I'm going to be sharing with you all about the mastermind, what I learned, what my big takeaways were, and what my next steps are for Alex Beeden and what I'm doing within the business. And so I'm very much looking forward to sharing that with you. (laughs) But until then, thank you so much for listening. I love you guys so much. For all of you who joined Project Storyline, I'm so excited because we have so many big ideas and it's been so much fun because I got a message yesterday. I actually want to read it to you because it was just, I don't know if you guys remember before the launch of Project Storyline, I did an episode, probably episode 61 or maybe 59. And I shared with you my vision for Project Storyline and what Project Storyline is all about. And I said, you know, it's so much more than just prompts. It's so much more about like the story that you are telling yourself about your business and how that changes the way that you show up in your business. And also the way that it changes the way that other people view your business. But listen to what someone messaged me. Their name on Instagram is espacios underscore terra. So that's E-S-P-A-C-I-O-S underscore T-E-R-R-A. They said, I wanted to take the time and thank you for the great idea of Project Storyline. I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but with each prompt, I take the time to analyze my business, reorganize my ideas, and answer for myself questions that help me get to know my business and myself a little bit more. It's more than just prompts. Thank you for that. And to me, that was just such a full full circle moment of receiving that message because Project Storyline, yes, you're getting daily prompts, but the transformation that happens throughout you showing up and following through with these prompts on a consistent basis, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, the transformation that's actually taking place is so much deeper than just showing up daily and having these prompts to rely on. You're deepening your relationship with your followers, yes, But you are also deepening your relationship with your story and getting more clarity on who you are and your purpose and what your business is all about. And so I just, I love Project Storyline. And I know I shared this with you guys in my last solo episode. 
this has become so much more than what it was initially. Initially, it was a problem solver. It was like, cool, we need monthly income. And cool, double down on your DMs really helped people follow through with showing up on a consistent basis in their stories. Awesome. But it's turned into something that is just extraordinary. And I'm so excited. And I highlight that because I want you guys to know that like sometimes it takes getting off path and being in the unknown and the confusion of like, oh, why can't I freaking figure this out to actually figure it out? And so I love you guys. I appreciate each and every single one of you for listening. Before we go, I want to leave you with a challenge as I do every single week. And this week, I want you to spend time visualizing what it is that you want to create in your life and in your business. And I say that because it's funny because earlier I was like, it doesn't matter if you visualize or not, but it's just such a powerful tool. And I think the reason why I was able to create Project Storyline is because my vision for what I wanted was that recurring monthly income. My first idea of how to get there was Gram Slam and turning that into an evergreen product, which we're still going to do. And we're still working on that, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. And by the way, we've been working on this for like a year. We're almost celebrating the one year anniversary of the podcast. And if you go back and listen to the very first few episodes of the podcast, I'm like, all I want to do is turn Gram Slam into an evergreen product. But I want you to understand that if you can get clear on the outcome that you're trying to create, it doesn't matter like the details of what that looks like. Be flexible on what it looks like. Like you don't have to be crystal clear on every single detail of what it looks like because the truth is like life can have a way better plan in store for you than you can even imagine, right? So in this case, like I thought it was going to be Gram Slam, my online course as an evergreen course. And what ended up happening was we came out with the subscription service instead. It's not what I expected, but it's even better than what I, than what I could have imagined, right? So now like we have this power pair, power couple of Gram Slam and Project Storyline. And I can use this as a way to, to really bring attention to my business, be the Instagram stories queen. And then once people are introduced to me, then start to have the deeper conversations about like, how are you showing up in your business? What is your marketing plan and strategy? What is your business model? How are you launching? And all that jazz. So that's where I'm at right now. I love you guys so much. Spend the time this week to visualize the end outcome and the end results of what you want to create in your business and why you want to create that and how that's going to affect your life. And also get clear on the results that you want to create for your clients and the transformation that you want to create for them. Because like I said, for me, Project Storyline it's helping people get clear on their why. It's helping people get clear on who they are and getting the confidence to tell their story and share their story online. It's so much more than just story prompts, right? And so being clear on that from the get-go, again, super helpful. I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, evening, whatever, however you're listening to me. If you really enjoy this episode, I would love for you to leave a review because y'all know I'm all about that review life, right? It's like the best, most important way that you can support this show. And so just to give you a little bit of inspiration, this is a review that was left from Sonatina26 via Apple Podcasts in the United States of America. She said, Alex is such a generous, heart-centered leader and entrepreneur. She said, I love you, Alex. You are one of my favorite entrepreneurs to follow. It's obvious that Alex has a wealth of knowledge, but I think what I love most about her is how she shares so generously, is a captivating storyteller, and has a gift for truly connecting with her audience and being of service. Thank you for everything that you do. Girl, thank you so much for that review. And if you're listening and you have yet to leave a review, I'm just going to ask you, why haven't you done it yet? It literally takes two minutes. It really supports the show. It allows other people to know what to expect when they listen to the show. So if you enjoyed this episode and you want to say thank you, that is the best way to do it. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk again soon. Bye. If you've reached this far in the episode, that must mean that you loved what you just heard. And I want to say thank you for listening. I also want to prompt you to take a simple action step that would really make my day and really help support what I do here on the show. I would deeply appreciate it if you could take two minutes of your time to leave us a review. To do it, it's super simple. You're just going to open the podcast app on your phone, search for On Purpose with Alex Beaton, scroll down until you see the ratings and review section, and then tap the write a review button. 
Your reviews are what help support this show. So please, if you are enjoying this content, take the 60 seconds that it will take and go and write a review. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I want you to know how much I appreciate your attention. I want to thank you for listening and I can't wait for you to listen to the next episode.